Is it right? I've forgotten how. <laughs> Man, it's good to meet you again after after ten ten years. That goes yeah, until last week since the last time we met. But we're doing a our Gavin's doing an, an item here on uh, people who are involved in the civil rights campaign, and actually yeah. people who are involved in other campaigns. I mean, um, when we talk about the civil rights campaign, there were other things that had to be campaigns fought before that, which you were involved in. Right. So I'm just going to do a quick room sort of back to back to yourself. Okay. Where, you were born in Derry, my hope. I was indeed. Yeah. Where Where were you born in? In Marlborough Street. Marlborough Street. Right. And uh, did you live there until you lived there until you get married, or was it? I lived there until I joined the bank, and uh, then had a career in the bank. What What bank did you go to? The then Monster and Leinster. All right, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I uh, there for about seven years. So, obviously, you were on Rosemary there. So, was, what school did you go to there? Uh, Rosemary Bowie. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Well, uh, then what was, did you go on to, after the primary school, where did you go on to? St. Collins. So, then yeah. what you done your, you done your, did you go straight out of St. Columns then into the, into the banking? I did indeed, yeah. And were, were you based in Derry or were you no, based? No, I was based in Ballinar, County Mayo. Was he? At that time, Ballinar, County Mayo must have seemed a... A million miles away. <laughs> just about a million miles away. They couldn't even uh, speak the same language because they had a Western tang that we never had. So how long do you stay down there? Seven years. So is that your full time in the bank? Aye. Did you leave the bank after that? Aye. My father, we were on a series of building shops. He, uh, what happened then? He got sick, couldn't continue working, and he asked me would I come home and run the business, which I then did. Mm -hmm. So you, you ran that for a number of years, did you? Aye, a few years. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a business side of it, but in between, uh, I mean, you, you raised a family then shortly yeah. after that. Yeah. And, uh, but campaigning, how did you first get involved? I mean, because I, I know you, the person who was involved in social issues for many, many years. That's right. Yeah. And the first memory I would have of you would have been back in sort of 64, 65 at that time. At the, at the time of the first university crisis. So how did you get involved in that? Uh, I was friendly with uh, John Hume and a couple of other people and John was leading the fight to have the university in Derry but he got nowhere. They planted it almost immediately in Coleraine and after that it was a tug of war between the two places. So I mean, there was a lot invested in that time by people, John, yourself and others, that, you know, that it was a very, very public exercise and very public demonstrations. Oh, but, but, but did you feel hope at the time that... Oh, yeah. You know, neither of us had any uh, contact with politicians. And the only move then was into uh, the University for Day campaign. And that lasted about a year before the government planted Coleraine as a university town. And both universities were then uh, competing with one another. Well, I, I remember at the time that, I mean, an hour before they actually set the location for the university, I remember, I mean, I was a bit younger, but I remember feeling very hopeful that well, nearly positive that Derry had to be accepted because right. it was a second city. It, it had a university college. And I don't think anybody at the time felt that there was any other alternative. That's right. And, and you, did you, how did you feel? Did you feel the same way? Well, what just happened to me? Uh, John's campaign uh, ended after about a year. And then after about 20 years, Professor Gavin, and asked him, would he be interested in fighting for McGee? He was in Georgetown, and uh, he said he would support it in any way that he could. So 
So we forced the government uh, to reopen McGee about 1980, that kind of time. And they reopened it. And they reopened McGee has functioned as a university ever since, side by side with the, the university at Coleraine. And Jordanstown too. And Jordanstown. Yeah. Well, it was Lockhart that actually made the the decision, wasn't it, that the government had brought on to do the uh, as the specialist as a to decide where the university should be placed. That was that hound. That's all I can call it. Hound and day hound. Uh, what's his name? Was Lockwood. Lockhart. Lockwood. 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 Lockwood yeah. Lockwood. Uh, it, it, it was placed in Coleraine because of the Lockwood report. But as I was telling you, Lockwood was half dead before he got to write the report. And that's why he was picked, because the dad uh and Stormont reckoned that they could recommend anything, and Lockwood wouldn't care. And that turns out to be true. So. I remember at the time, and I said, must have been a great disappointment to you because you were personally involved. I you know, I, mean, I remember at the time the, the town thing got it. But then, uh, if I remember right, it wasn't the fact that it was outside people who actually campaigned against against Derry. There was others as well within the city. Oh, there was, surely. They were called the faceless men and the Derry people because they were uh, at one remove. They were shouting for day, and then at another remove, they were shouting for Coleraine. Was wasn't was it Jones? Was it the MP at the time here? Yeah, he did nothing at all, for or against. Did he not? Whenever it came to the the, the, the vote and in instrument, did he yeah. not actually vote with the government for Coleraine? He did. He did. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I remember uh, lately they've kind of come across some paperwork that shows yeah. that he was actively campaigning. Against and the the unionist, you know the main politician in the town. The, the and I'm not naming them here now, but that we could name them because of Jerry Glover's and that they're uh, dead. Uh, and the papers have shown now that they were actively telling the government they didn't want universities in Derry. Right, that's right. For the good old reason. The good old reason. Terry Mullins of the Catholics. Yeah. So the uh, so the university was placing, and then I mean the campaign went dead. Everybody was deflated at that time. Aye. Uh, so, but then in, in between times, you, you were active in other things. You, you, you got active, and uh, you, did you start a, a, a business and uh, a fish business? That's right, with John Hill and myself. We were trying to get an industry that would have a low cost in dairy, but a high price in the markets in London. And we started working on this smoked salmon factory, it got to be quite a good size. We were sending uh, smoked salmon uh, up to half a thousand tons. It was going direct into into, back into London. London. But what, what happened, that went on for a few years and then the uh, Farm fisheries started and they were far cheaper than the wild fish and the business ended then. Mm. But I think I maybe over over jumped a year because apart from the things, uh, yeah, I mean, a, kind of a busy life, but one of the things that I mean, and it's probably the biggest uh, success story that you were involved in or anybody in this town has been, is the, the Credit Union movement. Oh, yes, yeah. So uh, you were involved in this stage of my hill in the credit union. I was involved uh, in Day Credit Union, in Pennyburn Credit Union, and in Waterside Credit Union. So how did how did how did you get involved in that? Y you join the credit union, and then every year the officers can change. Mm. So that's where, where I was brought in. So, I mean, the, the Derry Credit Union and, and credit unions generally in, in this area, I mean, are probably the biggest success in uh, sort of 
local ventures and have uh, considered uh, continue to be. So well, uh, I continue to yeah. say that Derry uh, stands out because of its gigantic success with the credit union movement. Mm -hmm. See the late sixties, then getting on the late sixties, you know, uh, you you were obviously very well aware as most people in this town were just with of the the inequalities and, and the discrimination and gerrymander and yeah. so you obviously get involved then in, in the social issues and in the civil rights movement. That's right. Yeah. So what what led you on that path, Mayo? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, being involved with the, the university kind of opened a whole lot of gates for me. And I was very friendly with uh, Professor Robert, Robert Gavin, who uh, was the provost in McGee for a few years. So that's how I got involved in the civil rights association. But then you were, whenever the the civil rights, the, the Dairy Citizens Action Committee was set up in the uh, town, uh, you, you were you were an original member of that and a very active member of that. I'm just looking around to see the photographs here and, and uh, the statements. So. How, how, what led you into that? Uh, well, a lot of the people who were involved up to that stage then became involved in credit union activity. And uh, that, that took a lot of time and people just hadn't any more time. They just did their credit union work and forgot about anything else. But you stayed, I mean, you stayed active because it, you stayed active when you got involved in the other field on the civil rights side of it. Some, uh, some people didn't go down that avenue. No. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't always an, even, an easy avenue for, for people to take. No, it wasn't. It was quite difficult. I mean, I, I, so I, I remember you and, and, and the, the movement and I remember, I mean, I've got respect for what you've done and, and sort of the, the cool head that you had on it because... Uh, um, it took a lot of organisation, but a lot, it took a lot of cool heads and cool thinking right, that, that yeah. I think that the Citizens Action Committee uh, actually showed a great leadership. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But that was down to the quality of the people who were doing the leading. Yeah. Um, and I say, you were, you were one of those people. Yeah. But the, when, when the campaign was actually going, uh, and... We were, you were looking for basic human rights, basic, right. basic rights, uh, which sometimes now seem very, very little. Hmm. Uh, did you did you feel at the time that there would be a, a, an opportunity for the, the, the? Did you feel any time that, and the early says that that you would I succeed in getting those rights? Well, we certainly succeeded in uh, getting support, but. Uh, we didn't get uh, very far forward because of the uh, anti dairy clan in, in uh, Belfast. The, I mean, there was some, there were some basic rights that, that were asked for, and they say over, funny, just within the time, early, just shortly after the campaign started, a lot of those rights were actually uh, given, I mean, I'm talking about housing and it took a few years to get the uh, discrimination, uh, job discrimination item out of the way. But housing, overthrow of the council in Derry, and, I mean, there were some successes out of the campaign. Well, there were, of course. Uh, the, uh, after the, the, when, when the uh, civil rights movement started and gathered weight, uh, for example, as a result of the civil the, the civil rights movement, uh, housing was was always a, a huge uh, disadvantage for Catholics. Uh, the, the government was forced to hand it over to um, the head of uh, the head of. Uh, a, a very well-known man in the housing market in his own right. I forgot his name now. He was very well-known. I remember that. 
in, in the house and they handed over housing and a number of other things as a result of the Citizens Act actually come in March what you're talking about there in and then they got that well they, they set up the housing executive yes. but then they, the other one was that they, they actually succeeded in getting the council in Derry uh, abolished that's right uh, well it, it had to go because it was run on uh, sectarian lines and Catholics never got what they were entitled to so this was an attempt to change that the, 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 the board is gerrymandered, I mean, that's how it was run, mm. and the way it was run uh, couldn't uh, deliver uh, a, a Catholic majority, even though there were Catholics in the city. Uh, the gerrymandering system meant that the Catholics could never achieve any kind of uh, progress in Housing, sorry, in uh, what do we call it? In the uh, in the 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 oh, the council, they can never, uh, I mean, there was no there was no jobs. I mean, there were no jobs, and there was no no houses being allocated That's right, to, yeah. because of uh, on a religious basis. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, after that period of time, then sixty nine. There's a big change in point when the, the violence came in. Aye. But remember, I think, were you involved, were you involved in the Citizens' Defence? Oh, I well, was, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what was your time like on it? Have you plenty of time? Aye? In, hey? Have you plenty of time? <laughs> oh, I had plenty of time. <laughs> plenty of time. <laughs> well, what happened was uh, the British, uh, we call it, invaded Northern Ireland. In the, at the beginning of August and the, the troops were on the streets with fixed banners in day and myself and Paddy Doherty went to the, the barracks where the troops and their commanders were and uh, we also had a very well known MP, forgotten his name, with us. But there and then, where the troops were still taking up their positions in day, we struck a bargain with them. And the bargain was that we would try to stop the rioting if they would agree to not to use, not to, uh, use uh, soldiers in the Kregan. And Colonel Todd, who was the uh, man in charge of the area, agreed with, with us that we, we, could we could do something that way. So, of course, we left uh, Colonel Todd and his soldiers, and we went into the bog side, and we told them what was happening, and we wanted them to stop riding, and we'll get the police and the uh, base badges taken out of free dairy. So that's what happened. And from then on, then we met regularly with Colonel Todd, Colonel something or other, some other Colonel, and we, had, we aired out all the problems. And one of the most striking was that uh, Colonel Todd told us that he was having deputations coming to him complaining that the Catholics couldn't get out. <laughs> to make the purchases. So I suggested, I said, now wait a minute, we'll, we'll offer to paint a white line across the road in place of all the barricades. And the Colonel had accepted that and he told us that his uh, customers, I will call them, uh, also accepted it too. At the very beginning, we were able to have quite an amount of control in free dairy. And I'll give you an instance of what uh, might have happened. In Belfast, there was no free dairy committee, and the surfers were just simply emptied onto the darkened streets where 20 of them were shot because there was no Catholic representatives 
to talk to them and drive fast the way we were talking to the army in Derry. So that's, uh, then that lasted for about, I think about two or three months. And then they, they got the ships got the order to withdraw. And what, what absolutely sent the loyalists up the walls <laughs> is that their army called a meeting to celebrate the end of Free Derry and the Colonel Spellman, who was their spokesman, stood up and he said, these, that's what he does, these are the real peacemakers. So he, that finished them. But our, uh, our uh, activities, uh, as we said at the time, our activities, uh, Yeah. Or, organizing the area because I remember yeah. the time that there was a lot of work. It, it, it just didn't yeah. happen. It had to be. No, that's what we worked on it, but we did work on it. And the Colonel Sard was had been a, a commander in the British in the something desert. Was I was out in Aden. Eh? Was he out in Aden? Out in Aden, member out in out in the Yemen. Ah, uh, but as far as we were concerned. He, he said, these are the peacemakers. Mm -hmm. That's, that was that. And uh, I wrote the final paragraph saying that, uh, wait a minute now, saying that, oh yeah, that at the end, free dairy consisted of 880 acres and 25,000 souls within which within which uh, only the writ of the Defence Association ra That was our final statement. Do you remember the time, funny, when you think back that this was, you were dealing with the, the British Army Aye. on that count, but there was many different types of people too. I mean, there was every sway of opinion. There was people who were nationalists, there was yourselves, there was, there was Republicans, people who would have been, mm. you know, who would have been uh, an early stage, would have never seen themselves in a position that... No, I say you should mention that because in the final photograph, winding up the... the uh, Bogside uh, Defence Committee, the, in the final uh, paragraph of that, how did you say there? You said something that... Oh, there was people from every different Republicans, there was niceness, there was... Uh, no, there's something yeah. else. I forget what the, That was the end of it, anyway. But there was people who you, who you wouldn't have ever imagined would have had themselves in negotiation with the British Army at that That's, time. Now you've sparked it off again. Uh, and the photograph that I was talking about with the army men and us, uh, uh, one of the four people who were photographed for the newspapers and all the next day were Sean Keenan, who was head of the IRA in Northern Ireland. Uh, when I look back at it, you, you know, it's hard to believe now that when you look back at that and those photographs and, and, and find that it was such a strange time that people of that, uh, of that sort of belief Aye. could be pragmatic enough Aye. to have a discussion with the British Army. Oh, As, <laughs> we didn't. We were a bit uh, concerned about what would happen if it went wrong? <laughs> we would probably have been hanged to the nearest, <laughs> nearest lamppost, but we didn't. Anyway. Pa pa I want to tell you, Paddy Dorsey was an absolute gem. He was extremely loquacious. He followed everything with the avalanche interest, and he never stopped. 
never stopped. And he, Paddy was one of the founder members of the Credit Union. That's right, he was, mm-hmm. along, as I'm saying that, along with yourselves, he was one of the founder members, I'm yeah. an his yeah, wife. Well, that's, his mm-hmm. wife. Mm-hmm. I think, if I remember rightly, they had eight pounds contributed between the whole of them, and they were stuck because they had to get uh, another pound, and they said, hold on, <laughs> I'll give you the other pound. <laughs> she ah. did. That was pretty good. Mm-hmm. But then, at that stage then, that, that it became political then, I mean, I think you supported John Hume and, and oh, Ivan no, that, sure, yeah. at that time. So, yeah. was there a decision made then that that street protest thing had done its time? It just happened. You know, it just really moved into another phase. So one phase ended and another phase started. So, but I, but I know that although at the early stages you wouldn't have been the front face, but I know that you're always you're always heavily involved in advising. I was, yeah. And as I say, that was obvious to me and, and others who, who knew. Yeah. But uh, it, it was a feeling at the time we had to move on to a political... We, we had certain rights now, and it was a feeling then we had to move on to a, a political level Aye. in order Aye. to Aye. sort of consolidate it. Rubber stamp. Yeah. Aye. So, uh, John, John won for election, and Ivan that all won for election at that time. And me. And you, really you would have for election too at the time, man. So, what was that? That's right. I, so, how did you find that? There was a 19. How did you find that experience, Michael? I'll tell you the truth now. I, we had to go to Belfast a couple of days a week, and I hated every minute of it. And you, we were in enemy territory, we would get nothing. And we made lose all. So <laughs> it's funny, funny kind of a thing, but it worked out. Actually. Was it a very, was it very, very alien when you went there? Oh God, bless us! Of course it was. So, but we made it known that we were going to be the guys, you know, when we ran for election, we knew that if we won, we would be active with these people. But but you, you knew there was going to be no cakes or I any bottles if you come on. Yeah. <laughs> They did, at the early stages, could, could they not find, you know, the unionism didn't even try at the time they... No, to well, it wasn't they didn't try, but they tried very They're, hard for their rights and nobody else's, same way as they are now. So then you, you spent a bit of time, it was assembly, wasn't it? But that time was the Northern Assembly? Aye, uh, but it got nowhere and did nothing. No. So, the... the uh, then you were you were in the Derry Civic Committee. Aye. That was the McGee thing again, was aye, it? That was the McGee thing again. Aye. So So we were really fighting that battle over and over and over again. Yeah. See that well mm. on the present day then, I mean I, I know you're still active on that and you're still you you're still active on campaigns. Aye. What's your What's your thoughts now on McGee, Michael? Because I say that's one of, I think it's one of the biggest challenges that we have in this area. It's the biggest? Yeah. I think so. Right. What's, what's your think hopes or thoughts on it now? Just that uh, we have made some progress in the sense that there's four and a half thousand students uh, and we have to continue to build to get the operating number which would be up to uh, 10,000 but it's going to be a hard battle but it can be done. Where do you, where do you feel that the hold up was my help in that process? Uh, the hold up was quite simple, it's where it always was. <laughs> I mean Corrine was simply thrown in to counterweight McGee that was the only reason that uh, Corey was founded. And uh, he, it, it now gets preference over McGee in many fields. But that doesn't mean that we're going to give up. So, we're not. So, is, is there an, an active group now still campaigning for, for there's McGee? Only, there's only a, 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 an active group working at the coal face of the university 
to maintain how they have and build what we need. Mm-hmm. Is there not a political will then? Is there not a political will sort of generally for McGee? What, what's stopping the political will for McGee uh, being developed? It's, it's, it's just that uh, many of the McGee courses have been transferred to Coleraine and uh, McGee doesn't get, isn't allowed to use its weight. So until that changes, uh, nothing is going to happen. But when you say use its weight, what, what do you mean by use its weight? Well, McGee has a, a very nice location and there's been a recent big development there which uh, covers four stories and the equivalent in uh, courses. So the, the springboard is there, but we do need uh, all the help we can get from the government. And we don't have a government? Even worse, we have civil servants. <laughs> and I don't think there's any powering and no civil power sharing and those uh Well see in the last see be, see before the present, sorry the last um government fell in Northern Ireland. Aye. was there no active uh part by government to, to uh, promote McGee? Oh there, there has never at any stage been any action of the government so there was to, different parties. I mean, there's. Uh, I can understand unionists. Uh, I've always felt they the reluctance to involve it. But yeah. I mean, the, the Sinn Féin were there, well, and they they had we should have equal say. So you you would have thought that they could have promoted that as a part of their red lines. Well, I'll give you two instances of what uh, Sinn Féin are responsible for. One is. That Martin, Mc, the late Martin McGuinness, and what I call that girl, uh, what's her name? The, the, the present? Aye. Michelle. Aye, what do I call Michelle O'Neill? No, no. What do I call her? She's a. Foster. Foster. Head of the DUP. Oh, God, Arden? Aye. Oh, Arden, I bet. What did I say there? Uh, was, what did you ask me there? I was, I was wondering why the Sinn Féin had an equal say in the mm-hmm. government. Mm-hmm. Why did they not use that uh, locally in order uh, to, to promote McGee? They never have. And people who are closer to the operations of McGee say that they never will. But surely... But I, I, I would point out to you uh, in that uh, when the row about the fire business uh, got going, they wanted to keep it quiet. Yes, and the RHI, they don't, they, they uh, uh, didn't want it, didn't want it made public. Which, in my opinion, was an atrocious lack of responsibility that they conspired with uh, the DUP to keep it quiet. Mm. And I, I have no indication up to now that there's any change in that situation. They wanted to quieten everything down, aided by the DUP. So even the well, that ends up. Uh, so even they go back on the even uh, the, the government res- restored you with no great faith that they're going to have any any active uh, role in the media. No, they go back to what they always did. Sit but, up on top of McGee hmm. and yap about uh, education, but there'd be no movement on McGee unless something else happens to bring that about. Hmm. Well, after so many years, Mel, it's been a pleasure meeting up again after this. But a couple of times, I've and it's always, uh, always been a pleasure. You know yourself, always oh, have respect always, to yourself. Uh, and I know, I remember vividly uh, you being in mm, the President's Palace. Oh, time of the uh, Arsenal. Ar- 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 Ar-
That's right. Ten I'm, years ago. I'm good at it, yeah. 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 But say thanks very much and I say Gavin I'll thank you again for taking the time and uh, it's been a real pleasure on my part meeting up again and hope we meet again along the way. We will meet along the way anyway. I'd be looking forward to that. Yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Gavin, you're right. This is not my role normally, but I don't know, we have to make it make it power payments. Hey. He's very good. He's very good, isn't he, Michael? Oh, terrific. You've got the rehab, you've stopped running away. Aye, I don't believe it. One, two, three. I saw it. One, two, three doesn't work. You better say something else. No.